is 98.1 love music love life it's five o'clock and time to share my musings with you on five at five as always i'd love to know what your thoughts are about the musings i'm sharing or if you've got any musings of your own things you've thought about things you've observed things that you just want to let out well we can have that conversation so send your messages to me via whatsapp it's 0809 981 I'm not doing it alone today. I've got a special guest joining me. Hello, special guest. How are you doing? How's it going? Oh my days. Moses, please do not do that voice. <laughs> you said I was special, so you know, you, I thought you know you needed something more special. <laughs> So, just in case you haven't figured it out yet, my special guest is Moses Praise, and he's joining me on Five at Five this beautiful, beautiful evening. Are we ready? I'm uh, ready. Okay. So, my first musing has to do with friendships, right? Mm. Um, I saw a tweet that sort of resonated with me. Um, someone had tweeted something, and she said she doesn't ask her friends what's going on in their lives, except they tell her because she doesn't want to be too pushy. And I'm in that um, WhatsApp group, as they'd say. I don't like to ask people about their personal lives, regardless of how close we are. I just feel like if it's something you want to tell me, then I'll be there to listen. And I remember having a conversation about this and someone said, well, people might think that you don't care about them or you're selfish. So what do you think? Should there be boundaries when it comes to friendship? Yes, there should be boundaries in, when it comes to everything, right, no matter what it is, I don't care how close you are to somebody. There has to be boundaries mm. there. Um, so I mean, I don't also buy the idea that you know you need to keep poking, like you know, tell me what's going on with you and stuff. Right. I feel if you guys engage well enough, deep enough, mm. things would actually drop, and then they, it, it will provide an opportunity for interaction. So I'm also in that WhatsApp group, uh, and I don't think that's selfishness because selfishness is that you tell me something. And I say nothing about it. And you really can hold that against people because mm. at times people don't know. Like for instance, somebody loses a loved ones. I struggle to speak to them. I don't know what to say to you. Mm. I have no idea what to say. You understand? Doesn't mean I, I don't feel empathy or right. sympathy towards your loss. Mm. But I just don't know how to deal with it with you. Mm. You get so and people need to recognize this is what it is and manage people the way they are. Mm -hmm. Don't you can't expect people to love you the way you love them. Right. Things are different. People are just different. Yeah, people are exposures, different. experiences, everything is just different. Mm. Once you understand that, I think it's easier to deal with people. Okay. I like that. So we're on the same or we're in the same WhatsApp group. So let us know. Are you on this in this group with Moses and I? Or are you team? Ask and if you see someone that is not smiling, keep pushing till they tell you. Just let us know. All right, so moving on to our second musing. This one has to do with not expecting too much from people. So I have a policy, right? Um, don't expect too much from people so you're not hurt. Mm. So some people might say it's a rather pessimist view on life. But I've realized that since I don't expect anything from anyone, um, when things happen, I'm just like, mm, okay, keep it moving. And I find that it works for me because I had been in so many situations where I had high expectations. And because people are human, those expectations would always be dashed mm. or broken and then you're the one that's feeling bad about it mm. so i find that maybe just expect the worst the worst <laughs> so that when the worst happens you're like oh well okay i kind of expected this now, th that is a part where i would not trail with you mm. i like the first part um where have no expectations right as opposed to expecting the worst that I that's very pessimistic. Mm. <laughs> I, I don't go down that lane. Okay. But I prefer not to have any expectations and I right. think it's actually great. It manages it manages your own expectation on people. Mm. I train my children as little as they are that nobody owes you anything. Once you have that understanding, when anything is done for you, you'll be much more appreciative of it. Mm. You know, you won't take it for granted at all. But I will not agree to you know always thinking the worst and right. there are people who are just like that because like oh, okay i was expecting it anyway because what we don't realize is uh we are very powerful beings mm. you understand just your imagination alone you could literally see somebody walking and you just imagine them taking a tumble and it happens right that's how powerful we are so 
when something like that happens, then you're the one who actually made it happen. Mm. I'll give you an example. I have a, a friend whose elder brother makes shoes. You know, so, so I'm like, you know, I wanted to patronize him. This was many years ago anyway. Mm. I'm like, Bio, you, you make shoes for me. You, ah. He said, I'll make it too. But the problem is that you will curse me. I said, why would I want to curse you? He said, you will curse me now. Because what people say most times to him is, uh, Bio, make shoes for me. Mm. I could know you won't make it. <laughs> <laughs> now it sounds better when you say it in Yoruba. <laughs> okay. Oh, niche, you know. So with that, now he says, "Well, since you've already cursed me, how do you want me to make the shoe? I can't make it, you know." <laughs> so we're very, our tongues are very powerful, and people right. need to be careful what your expectations are. It will come to you. Right. Okay. All right. So let's move on to our third musing, and this one is kind of linked to what you've just said about how thoughts and imaginations, and maybe even words can be very powerful, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I was having a conversation with someone and she spoke about her grandparents. Her grandfather lived to be maybe 109 and then he passed. And now her grandma is maybe 102 or 103. My granddad lived to be 101, so I'm going to live long, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm tapping into that. But... Be it a shawarma. <laughs> is it weird? Moses, are you reading my mind? I was actually thinking I want shawarma this evening after work. Should be you. We are pushing one down to beating Shawarma. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, um, I said, you know what? That's such a blessing having grandparents. I mean, the queen passed away at 96, right? And I was just thinking of how blessed it was for Prince Charles at 72 to have his mom and his dad in his life, right? So we were talking and then she said something. She said people focus on generational curses, at, but they don't think about the generational blessings. And it sort of had left an imprint in me because when you have older parents or grandparents, family members who live to be very old, chances are because you share the same DNA, have some form of genetic constitution, you're going to benefit from that. We're talking curses and blessings, right? Yeah. I think it's a simple case of what you what you sow, you reap. Mm. And uh, if you go with uh, biblical antecedents, it, it always says down to the fourth generation. And uh, so yes, that does happen. Mm. But the truth is, you can you can break off it if you choose not to go with the values, the principles, and the hows of how your parents lived. Right. If you break away from that, then you can break away from uh, whatever those curses are. So it is actually very true. They're very powerful, mm. and those things uh, do have a hold in our lives. If you continue in the way the way of their lifestyle, mm. you definitely will continue with that same curse and pass it down to your own offspring but if you break away from that then you're good and then if you continue with the blessings you get some of those blessings as, as simple well. as that oh, that's why people say ah, abraham blessings are mine it's just nonsense they're not talking nonsense <laughs> because you have to do what he, abraham did to get his right blessings. right right okay okay so moving on to our fourth musing um this one has to do with let's see i was reading something about um a chip and this is something that um mr musk is developing it's some neural link thing and uh, it's supposed to help with brain stimulation to make people smarter have retentive memories or if people are disabled it's supposed to you know help them function and i know a microchip you're talking about yes yes i know a lot of people are very wary about things like this and they'll try to back it up with um you know the whatever their religious beliefs are when it comes to the end times people taking chips i mean we've had some men of god say people are going to turn to vampires if they get vaccinated but i digress so um would you take a microchip no in your brain if it would make you smarter no if it would make you richer if it would make you taller no an emphatic (laughs) no ask yourself this question elon musk is mm. where he is today. Right. Because of a chip in his brain. <laughs> well, he might have a chip, we don't know. My point is we've had multi billionaires. We've had mm. extremely intelligent people right. in the past. Did they have a chip in their brain? Mm. Everybody's looking for those simpler ways to go. A chip in your brain is is an alien to your body. That's not how your body is supposed to function. So if that happens, you do know for a fact that mm. you know the adverse effect you can't even you can't even you know continue to think about that right now so it's a no no for me I, i'm i'm okay i'm okay as a stupid person 
I will die a stupid person. But at least I'm going to die with all my body parts intact, everything just as the way it should be. Wow. Uh, look, think about it. The people who built an airplane, did they mm. have chips in their head? Build mm. massive ships. And all of this craziness we see on the face of the earth built the internet. They didn't have no chip in their head. Right. All I'm saying in essence is your brain is the most complicated and most powerful tool on the face of the planet. Mm. And you haven't even on earth 30 to 40 percent of it. But you okay. want to put the chips on to speed the whole thing up. <laughs> Try it. Go, go now. Go. Wow, so far. It's a no for me. All right, it's a no. Would you put a chip in your brain if it would make you smarter? No. No. All right. Okay. All you people who do not like science. Nobody said they didn't like science. <laughs> would you put a chip in your head if it would make you taller or whatever? Why did you pick taller? You could have said smarter, Moses, or richer. Because I know you're smarter. I know you're rich. You're just not tall. <laughs> <laughs> the shade of it all. <laughs> So I'm just saying. Okay, but would I? Probably not. Nah. Yeah, probably not. Okay, so for our fifth and final musing, this one has to do with how shopping has changed over the years. So back in the day, uh, people would have to go to a market and haggle, and then supermarkets came up where you had a fixed price, you walked in, you walked to a cashier, and then, you know, times evolved. We now started seeing this um, self-service tills where you can go to a supermarket, scan your goods, pay without even having contact with anyone but apparently they're now newer models of shopping and amazon tried this uh where you actually walk in a store and you go with your trolley there's nobody in the store no well there, there maybe two or three <laughs> yeah in a massive store maybe okay. two or three right and then you go in that store as you're putting your things in your trolley or taking them out it's automatically it's scanning. calculating and scanning. I saw it. There, there was nobody in the store. So literally, you could walk in, you understand, mm. shop, do all your shopping. And of course, since all your details are online anyway, yeah. so right then, then. So now there's even a newer one. Oh, really? Yeah. So this is the newest version. I read about this just a few days ago. So you actually walk into a store, take what you need and walk out without paying. You get your bill later. Mm. So how this works is the shelves and you know the store is fitted with cameras and sensors so they're basically sort of checking the weight of everything you're buying and then as you're going home they get you a price and boom yeah that's what is the same thing too it's right. the same thing i saw i saw that a few years ago and i think it was even amazon <laughs> that actually <laughs> did that i saw that a few i thought it was pretty cool though but again isn't this like making us very very lazy Mm. I think that's what it's doing. Look, I don't, I don't, I, I promise you right now. People say, okay, you go to a supermarket. Of course, when we used to go to the, you, you go to a market, you know, you haggle you prices. Haggle, yeah. Even in the supermarket, I've done it many times. What? Where, Mom, oh yeah, you I'll go in, in the supermarket. Oh yeah, I go in. By the time I'm done shopping, I said I want a discount. Okay, okay, that's not haggling. You're asking for a discount. I still get a discount. It's still like <laughs> haggling anyway. It is. And I get a discount because, I mean, who, who who gets discount from a supermarket? <laughs> but I do. I, I want a discount. And I do get a discount. Wow. You know, and, and look, I think over time, things are going to get even much easier. Mm. Uh, it will make us much lazier. There was a movie I saw a few years ago. I think it was with uh, this guy, this actor, Moonlight, and then Die Hard. Bruce Willis? Bruce Willis. Okay. Where you basically, you lay in your house, go nowhere, mm -hmm. and you have um, a clone that basically goes out and does everything you do. Wow. Yes. That is scary. And when it comes back, it plugs itself back in because you just transfer your mind to the clone. Mm. And it goes, it does all the craziness, blah, blah, blah. Wait, it comes back, it plugs it itself back stuff. in. And then, and you could literally be in the house there for years. Wow. And I saw Surrogates, that movie. That's the name of the movie. Surrogates, that's it. Yeah, thank you, Cruz, for that. Oh, man. That, 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 and you see, that was a long time ago. But mm. I promise you, we may be headed there. And I think it's also that lack of human contact. that Because we're meant to be social beings, right? We're meant to interact with people. Mm. So when you're walking to a supermarket, you're not speaking to any attendants. It's like everything is so mechanized. It does take away a bit of that human It doesn't take away thing. a bit. It takes away a whole lot. Right. It was the same movie. Another movie I saw, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Total Recall. Mm. Was it Total Recall or Demolition Man? I don't remember which one. Where, you know, now he has to make love to this woman. And both that of them have to put on a headset. Sharon Stone, was that her? I think so. Okay. But they put on a headset. And we're like, ooh. Uh, I'm like, wait, <laughs> apart? 
<laughs> All right, we're out of time, but thank you so much, Moses, for joining us. Before those things come, let me just die and go. You're not going anywhere. There's no way I want to see You will I enjoy know. technology, Moses. No, thank you. <laughs> and that's it for 5 of 5. Lots of messages coming through. We'll read your messages at 6 p.m.